Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 23 of the platform specific series of my 68000 assembly tutorials. This week we're going to look at how to make sound on the Amiga. Now, the Amiga is very different to the systems we've looked at in the past because, unlike the other systems, the Amiga actually uses digital sound, so we effectively can have to create wave samples and get the Amiga to play them. Now, the Amiga has four sound channels. Two of them are full left and two are full right. So we're actually going to be using a pair today to create a mono sound sample. They're effectively controlled by a set of memory map chipped registers. So these all start at DFF and then a number according to which one we want to change. So we need to set up two of the channels with a memory location and a length and a volume and so on. And then we need to set a DMA up and so that the sound will automatically be passed to the sound hardware from the system memory. Now, we have to define our own samples, so we're going to define a square wave and we're going to define a noise sample. But these need to be defined within chip RAM. I made the mistake early on of not using chip RAM, wondering why my samples weren't playing. That's why they've got to be in the chip RAM section because the system hardware can't access the extra upgrade memory within the system. So that's something we do need to take into account. Okay, first of all then, let's actually hear the sound playing and then we'll look at the Chibi Sound Driver, which is my sound driver and how it actually works on the Amiga with its sound samples. So here we can see a single byte on the screen and this is the data that's being passed to Chibi, Chibi Sound. Chibi Sound just uses a one byte parameter. The way it works is that the top bit defines whether noise is on or off, the next bit, bit 6, defines high or low volume and the remaining bits are the pitch and, and that's why you can see that the pitch is getting higher as the number is going down and you can see that the waveform here is based on what we're going to pass to it as wave data. So this is our kind of square wave here. You can see it's not quite square, just close enough maybe. And then when we get to below zero here, we've got our noise samples, which we can see are distinctly noisy. Okay, so how does all of this work? Well, first of all, we've got our chip area. Now, I use this definition RAM area here, which sets us into the chip area. And then we've got a few bytes of noise here. And then we've got just some simple bytes of square wave here. Now, one thing to notice is that the longer this section is, the better quality the noise will be. So if you wanted a really good noise sample, you'd want more bytes. But um, the square wave isn't so important. We've just got an up, down, up, down kind of definition here. Now, Chibi Sound is very straightforward. We call Chibi Sound with a single byte in D0 here. And then depending on that byte, the sound will be made. So all we're doing here is we're setting it to hexadecimal 80, passing it to Chibi Sound, we're showing it on the screen, of course, and then we're just decreasing it, looping around, changing the sound each time. Here's the actual code that does Chibi Sound. It's a little bit more complex on this system because of the way that it works with WAV files, but we're going to go through it now. In the past, when we've worked with chip registers, we've worked with the copper chip, which is the coprocessor that passes data to it. In this case, we can work with the chip directly, the chip registers, because we don't need to worry about the interrupts changing things. The screen refresh doesn't affect it in any way. So that's what we're going to do here. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to start just here. And the first thing we're going to do is going to test if the byte that's been passed is zero. If the byte is zero, we're going to silence the sound chip. So let's look at how we're going to do that. We will just branch up to here and then we're going to change DFFOA8 and then the register 16 bytes along. So let's have a look at that list of definitions here. So DFFOA8 here is the left volume for this channel here, channel 0. And then the register 16 along, well, there's 16 bytes to each set of registers. So by writing to A8 and A8 plus 16, we're effectively writing to A8 and B8, the opposite right channel for the A8 left channel. And that's what we're doing here. You see there's this plus 16 over and over again here. It effectively just means the opposite channel. And it's just a way to make it clear that we're doing something for the matching channel on the other side of the speakers. So that's what we're doing here. What we're doing is we're setting A8 and A8 plus 16. So the channel zero and one to zero volume and that is the minimum. The maximum is 64. So we're silencing both channels by doing that. Now what we're doing here is we're backing up D0 into D3 because we need to uh, make a temporary copy so that we can do some calculations. And the first thing we're doing here is we are taking the six bits of pitch because our definition uses six bits. Our definition is just here. So six bits of pitch here, one bit of volume and one bit of tone, either noise or a square wave. And so we're taking the six pitch bits, we're rotating to them left five times, and then we're storing the word into 
DFF 086 and the same for the right channel because of course everything's mono here and so that is the period here which is effectively the tone. Okay so we've now got our tone set up next we're going to move to our volume we just use a single bit of volume here so we want to turn that into a low or high volume and so what we're doing here is we're rotating it to the right one setting all the other bits to one effectively setting the volume to either 63 or 31 and then we're setting that volume to both channels again here using the exact same registers we did up here so now what we need to do is we need to decide if we're making a noise sound or if we're making a pure tone so what we're doing here is we're testing the top bit if the top bit is one then we are making a noise here so we are going to run some code just here if it's a zero we're not making noise we jump down to here now at this point we loaded the length of the tone into a1 and the tone address into a0 here but if we're going to make a noise we need to load the noise versions in here but then we're also running this chibi sound noise function here now you see if we don't use this i can just play this for you this is effectively changing the random data in that noise sample because if we don't run that we're just going to get a kind of synthetic sound but it's not really going to be very much like a noise sound effect so we don't really have a noise effect here what we've got is more like a sort of a fake car engine or something in a very early game so that's the effect of not randomizing our noise and in fact the way we randomize our noise and how often we randomize it will if improve possibly the sound effect so that's what we're doing here we're running this randomization routine and it's got two options basically it just goes to every byte within the noise sample the, ran the random noise sample and it either uses a get random function to return a byte if one exists if it doesn't it's just oring in a bunch of the registers and the e oring them and things to flip things around a bit and it doesn't work very well so hopefully you've got a random function here now within the grime 68,000 program what I actually did is I actually also put this randomized function within the interrupt handler so that the frame interrupts of the screen redrawing were also randomizing the data again because really the more random data you have the better quality the noise samples are going to be and this is quite a surprising thing the Amiga's got superb sound but it was actually harder to get a noise sample out of the Amiga than pretty much all of the other systems so um, bit of a surprise there but anyway that's what we're doing here we're re-randomizing those noise samples so that we've got some good sound now once we get to this point we've defined our noise sample and the length so we just need to load those in so we're using DFF0A0 here to set the location in memory of the left and right sound channels the wave sample and then we need to load the length into a into DFF OA4 and B4 here to set the length of the samples and then the last thing we need to do is we actually need to start the sound now the way we do this is with the DMA control this will pass the data from memory into the sound chip so what we need to do is we need to set the top bit to one because we want to set the bits and then we are setting the enable bit here and we are turning on channels zero and one here which are the left and right channel that we've been setting all along so this will turn on the, the sound samples being passed by the DMA control from the memory to the sound chip and that's the last thing we need to do to play our sound so there we go so we've learned how to create a very simple sound here of course there's another two channels we could do the same with and you know if we wanted to be clever we could play wave samples and things the Amiga is far better than what we've looked at today but for chibi sound we just wanted to learn how to make a very simple beep for a very early game and if you want to do more of course you can use this as a sort of template to start from there okay that's all we're going to be covering today i hope you find this interesting please like and subscribe if you have because we're going to be coming back to the amiga later on thanks for watching today anyway and goodbye if you enjoyed today's lesson please check out my website we've got tutorials at source code and development tools for 6502 68000 and z80 systems and a lot more systems coming in the future we're going to be covering the 8086 and the arm and a few other things as well going forward and if you've liked this lesson if you've got questions comments or suggestions on how it could be made better please consider signing up to my forum it's free of course and you can come along here and you can make suggestions you can ask questions and if you've got assembly projects you're working on please let us know what they are maybe show off a few screenshots tell us what things you've found interesting or what tricks you've come up with because we'd love to know about it anyway thanks for watching today and goodbye